the two men began equivocating under the powerful gaze of Dr. Kathy Ryan. And in the end, they'd stammered out something about clandestine intelligence analysis that made it sound as if Jack Jr. spent his days with his elbows propped on a desk, reading computer files, looking for ne'er-do-well financiers and money launderers, work that would expose him to no more danger than carpal tunnel syndrome and paper cuts. If only that were the truth, Jack Sr. thought to himself, as a fresh wash of stomach acid burned into his gut. No, the conversation with his wife had not gone particularly well, Jack Sr. admitted to himself afterward. He broached the subject a couple of times since. He hoped he'd been able to peel back another layer of the onion for Kathy. Just maybe she was beginning to get the idea that her son was involved in some real intelligence field work. But again, Ryan Sr. had just made it sound like Ryan Jr. occasionally traveled to European capitals, dined with politicians and bureaucrats, and then wrote reports about their conversations on his laptop while sipping burgundy and watching seat men. Oh well, thought Jack. What she doesn't know won't hurt her. And if she did know, Jesus. With Kyle and Katie still at home, she had enough on her plate without having to also worry about her 26-year-old son, didn't she? Jack Sr. told himself that worrying about Jack Jr.'s profession would be his burden, not Kathy's. And it was a burden that he had to shake off for the time being. He had an election to win. Ryan's mood brightened a bit. Things were looking good for his campaign. The latest Pew poll had Ryan up by 13%. Gallup was right there at plus 11. The networks had done their own poll, and all three were slightly lower, probably due to some selection bias that his campaign manager, Arnold Van Dam, and his people had not bothered to research yet because Ryan was so far ahead. The Electoral College race was tighter, Jack knew, but it always was. He and Arnie both felt he needed a good showing in the next debate to keep some momentum for the home stretch of the campaign, or at least until the last day. Most races tighten up in the final month or so. Pollsters call it the Labor Day spread, as the narrowing in the polls usually begins around Labor Day and continues on until Election Day on the first Tuesday in November. Statisticians and pundits differ on the reasons for this phenomenon. Was it that likely voters who had switched sides were now getting cold feet and returning to their original candidate? Could there be more independent thinking in the summer than there was in November, now closer to the time when answering the pollsters' questions had actual consequences? Was it the near wall-to-wall -wall news coverage on the frontrunner as Election Day approached that tended to highlight more gaps for the leading candidate? Ryan tended to agree with Arnie on the subject, as there were few people on Earth who knew more about matters related to campaigns and elections than Arnie Van Dam. Arnie explained it away as simple math. The candidate leading the race had more people polling in his favor than the candidate trailing. Therefore, if 10% of both voters shifted allegiance in the last month of a race, the candidate with more initial voters would lose more votes. Simple math, Ryan suspected. Nothing more. But simple math would not keep the talking heads on television talking, or the 24-7 political blogs blogging. So theories and conspiracies were ginned up by America's bloviating class. Ryan put down his water bottle grabbed his coat and slipped it on, then headed for the door. He felt a little better, but anxiety about his son kept his stomach churning. Hopefully, thought Ryan, Jack Jr. was just out tonight enjoying himself, maybe on a date with someone special. Yeah, Senior said to himself, surely that's all. 26-year-old Jack Ryan Jr. sensed movement on his right, and he spun away from it, twisted his body clear of the knife's blade as it made a plunge into his chest.